Welcome to Module 5 of Week 6 for ED1421. We have reached the middle of the term and congratulate yourself on making it this far. Well done. The focus of this week's presentation will be literacy events and practices. Module 5 will build upon what we already know about the social and cultural aspects of literacy practices. It reveals how in order to become literate, one, one must get engage in a multitude of literacy events and repertoires of practices where meaning is dependent on the context one is in and the text, whether written or spoken, or a range of other multimediated text forms, such as the media and even YouTube. As you can see, an understanding of how these texts position their audience is never more important than it is now in the digital age. By the end of this module, you will have reviewed the four literacy practices by Luke and Freebody that you've already been introduced to, you will have understood the role of text in positioning readers, listeners and viewers. You will also understand how language use is based on situational contexts and how these contexts influence the construction of literacy. Lastly, you'll be able to distinguish between the concepts of literacy events and practices and identify ways in which literacy operates as a set of situated practice. In other words, how literacy is dependent on det or determined by the context it is in. So let's recap what discourse is, as it is one of the most abstract concepts that, that, and it takes a while to get your head around it, but once you do, it is invaluable. So discourse is the ways of being, feeling, acting, thinking, include, and it includes the language use in particular groups. To become a member of a discourse, you must develop communicative competence. This is a set of situated practices that you need to engage in in order to become a member of the discourse, such as you have done now to become a member of the university discourse. You are gaining communicative competence. As you already know, members of discourses are constructed, but they see the various practices that they engage in, like within their discourse, as normal, as merely the way things are. For this reason, discourses have a self-perpetuating behaviour that only changes when members of the discourse begin to challenge the ways of being, such as the values and beliefs of the discourse. One of the concepts that are introduced in your readings this week is a term register. Register is the ability or the deliberate change of our language used for different situations. This means that each context we are in requires us to change the register in order to communicate it appropriately, such as the language you'll use when you speak to a doctor as opposed to the language you'll use when you speak to a cashier or as opposed to how you'd speak to your mother. This illustrates how context can vary significantly and require the individual to act or behave accordingly. It would be strange to speak to a very good friend as if they were a lawyer. Therefore, in each community, there are different registers or codes within, within the one language that members can switch to and from as the social context changes. So reg register in your textbook for this subject refers to the register of the classroom as the curriculum genre. In order for students to be successful in your classroom, they need to recognize and be successful at applying the curriculum genre. Therefore, in particular for you as an early childhood educator, an understanding of early language experiences and how these prepare children well for school and others, and others is important to understand. Because of the differences in background, teachers should not make value judgments about the use of one register over another, as all the registers that you'll encounter in your teaching experience are all socially constructed ways of making meaning for the student. And not inherently, and there is no register in particular would be inherently superior to another. In fact, teachers need to recognize that the language of power, the register that is preferred in our schools, must be taught explicitly for our children to develop communicative competence in the classroom genres. So what is a literacy event? It is, according to the textbook that you're reading, it is any activities where literacy has a role. These literacy events include anything from uh, all the literacy events that you'll encounter in schooling, when you go shopping, when you're reading any type of text, regardless of where, where you may find it, and many, many more other, other practices that you may engage in. 
basically any event that requires meaning making. Research reveals that good readers make links between visual information on the page and the cognitive or non-visual information they have built up through past experiences. For this reason, understanding the types of literacy events that individuals engage in enables us to understand their background and what we need to teach them in order for them to be able to engage in the literacy events that we require them to engage in. So, if we know what literacy events are now, what is situated practice? Well, we know that literacy is behaviour acquired as a result of belonging to various discourse community, communities. Therefore, to be situated or positioned within these communities, we are able to engage in the practice because we know how it works and how to participate, participate in the discourse. For example, the situated practice of university is different to the situated practice of, practice of your home. But in order for you to engage in the discourse of university, you situate yourself in the practice of university to become a member. Therefore, situated practices include our social behaviour, how we behave around others within that context, our language use, our values and beliefs, the cultural environment, uh, even anything from our clothing and accessories to how we, we, we dress and basically everything that is involved with the practice of a discourse. Now, Anstey and Bull, in your readings, has made four statements about literacy summarised as follows. They outline how literacy is an everyday social practice, and it is not a neutral practice and is therefore a political enterprise. They have also asserted that the pedagogy of literacy empowers and disempowers particular sociocultural groups. What this means is that the teaching of language in the classroom gives or maintains the power of certain groups, such as those in power, and per perpetuates the powerlessness, powerlessness of those without power. Thus, the teaching of text analysis enables text users to do the above practices. Before we wrap up this module, we will briefly look at the study that you'll be reading about. It is a study of three different communities in southern USA and the way each community engages in different practices involved in different literacy events. The three communities each have different literacy practices, such as ways of encoding and decoding, and they include the main, ta main town community, uh, middle class community. The, the research found that this family decontextualizes or remove from the context they read or remove from the context their reading practices and make links between abstract concepts and the real context of everyday life, such as reading books to learn about the world around them. In the Roadville community, a working class community, members do reading on an everyday basis to complete their work, but they do not make attempts to make links between the abstract and the real. In the Tracton, a black working class community, the members use oral storytelling with an emphasis on body language and do not engage in the reading practices of both the main town and Roadville community. So what Heath's research has revealed is that the more a child's community-based literacy practices match, match those of the school, such as with the main town community, the more likely they are to experience success in the curriculum genre, which is also known by Ch James Paul Gee as a goodness of fit. What Heath's, Heath's research also reveals is is that the social practices of literacy and how these operate in different communities can cause young children to be literate in different ways. The three communities revealed that how each community provides different situated literacies and these ways of making meaning are not superior to one another, they are just different. For these reasons, as educators, our awareness of these community, communities' differences will better enable us to differentiate instruction to meet the needs of learners with different literacy backgrounds. If you have any further questions, please post questions about the subject or this module in the Frequently Asked Questions located in LearnJCU or contact me directly via email. See the subject outline, the LibGuide, LearnJCU and Facebook for further contact details and information about this subject. Thank you for listening to Module 5, Literacy Events and Practices. Next week, I'll present a video for Module 6, Text and Discourse Analysis. Please subscribe and comment. Any feedback is appreciated.
Thank you. Bye for now.